The word Iditarod means distant or distant place as spoken by the indigenous Athabascans who populate the 49th state of Alaska. But today it serves as a metaphor from the city of Anchorage for our shared language of reinvention. Every year, the first weekend of March, this place turns into a madhouse. Downtown Anchorage, Alaska, the corner of 4th Avenue and D Street. The ceremonial start line for the running of the Iditarod, which uh, again has been dating back to 1973. It's called the last great race on earth. And the grandfather of the Iditarod was an Alaskan by the name of Joe Reddington Sr. And it was developed as a way to honor uh, the great tradition of the Iditarod Trail and in particular a rescue mission that happened back in 1925 from here to Nome, Alaska where the only way to get emergency medical supplies to the town of Nome was through dog sled relays. Some very quick facts about the Iditarod. In 1973 it all got started and way back then it took about 20 days to complete. Now it takes anywhere on average from about 8 to 10 days. Coming up uh, in a couple of weeks from now here in Anchorage, 73 mushers will be competing. The first place prize money is about $70,000 plus a new truck. But before you think dire straits that there's money in the mushing, hey none of it's for free because on average my research is telling me that it takes about anywhere from like fifty to a hundred thousand dollars a year just to bankroll your dog sled operation you need about thirty five to fifty dogs give or take to uh, use as a team to get down to the final sixteen that will be required to compete in the Iditarod So when you think about it, back in the early 1970s, the Iditarod was nothing more than that, just an idea, the brainchild of Joe Reddington Sr. But when you think about the power of a single idea, hey, between 40 and 60 million dollars annually is pumped into the Alaskan economy because of this world-class event. Tens of thousands of people from all over the world come here to Anchorage. And I think for us here, on the reinvention chronicles it serves as a great metaphor it's symbolic of a big idea so for any company any community anyone who wants to advance their career serious about changing the way things are right now does it pass the iditarod test is it worthy of what you want to accomplish in terms of the idea itself being big enough grand enough majestic enough You see, back in 1973, Joe Reddington had two reasons for organizing the Iditarod. He wanted to save dog sled culture here in Alaska, which was being gradually phased out by snowmobiles. And he wanted to preserve the history and the tradition of the historical trail between here and Nome and what it represented in terms of that rescue mission back in 1925. See, when it comes to the criteria, of passing the Iditarod idea test. Two things need to be in place. The idea itself has to be bigger than any one person, including yourself. And number two, it needs to be an idea so big, it will push you to become bigger, way out to the outer edges and beyond of the zone called comfort, which does not exist in the thousand or so miles behind us when those Iditarod mushers take off. Uh, coming up here in a couple of weeks.
You see, you will only ever grow and get bigger as a company, as a community, grow and get bigger as an individual if you actually plug into an idea that's bigger than what you are right now, much bigger. So the great thing about this is you don't have to be a Steve Jobs, an Elon Musk, or Richard Branson to be able to pull this off. Any one of those kids going by in the school bus someday could be capable of their own Iditarod type idea. Think about the people that you know right now who have actually done this. I know for myself. Uh, one of my great friends out of Fredericton, New Brunswick, my home province, Jim Gilbert, his Iditarod type idea to actually become known as Canada's huggable car dealer, absolutely smashing all the stereotypes in his industry, becoming one of the country's great small business success stories. But also in my home province, my good friend Dan Martell, I was just talking to him the other day and there he is living the dream, the dream life in San Diego. He's become a world-class expert on how to scale uh, any business model and he's much in demand as an internet marketer and as an executive coach. So stop and think right now, what is the Iditarod type idea that's going to make you bigger? And in the spirit of the Iditarod, which of course means distant and distant place, how far out into the future are you thinking about the impact of what your idea could actually bring not only to you, but the world around you? Some ideas here from Anchorage, Alaska to help you recreate and reimagine the business, the brand, the life that you deserve.